So it's been a, a crazy week and I thought that instead of kind of going through some old Mac or Apple stuff, we could just do like a AMA thing. So I've got some questions from Twitter. Uh, you can also see I've got two boxes over my shoulder uh, to unbox on stream later. I'm waiting on a third box and maybe we'll get into that next week. Uh, but a little bit of an unusual week, so I thought we could just uh, hang out for a bit. So I've got some questions from Twitter. Also, I'm happy to take questions from Twitch. You know, we'll do this for half an hour or so, and everybody can go about their day. The first question I got was from Kate, and they required some homework for their questions. So Kate asked, can we get a current count of items in your collection? So I went and counted. I have it here on my phone. Best I can tell, this is accurate. So the current number is 43 Mac desktops, four Next machines, 51 notebooks, which are all Macs, eight Apple displays, nine iPads, five Newtons, 21 iPhones, 29 iPods, four Apple TVs, two X serves, and then a bunch of random stuff. So like a Pippin, a Power CD, an iPod Hi-Fi, an X serve RAID, which you can actually see over my shoulder if I go that way. X serve RAID back there. Um, so so it's it's uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff. Um, it's out of control. And that is not counting what's in those boxes right there. So the Hackett number came from an episode of Connected. That's a fixed number in time. And there's like a complicating factor in, in how to figure any changes from that. Uh, and I counted the eMate as a Newton device because it runs Newton OS. So uh, it's definitely grown a little bit over the last year, a little more slowly than it has in the past. Uh, one of the reasons for that we will get to as a later question. Uh, but things are still trickling in. I will say these two Macs and the one that FedEx has eaten that is hopefully showing up at some point, they're all ancient beige Macs. So it's, um, it's going to be an adventure to open, open up those. Like I said, I think we can get into those next week. All right. So that was question number one. Uh, Kate had a second question asked about my foot recovery. So for those who have been following along, I had uh, foot surgery the week of Halloween in 2020. And actually this morning I had a checkup with the surgeon and everything continues to look good. The hardware they put in place is still doing what it's supposed to do. And um, I've been walking with a carbon fiber plate in the bottom of my shoe to make it really stiff so my foot doesn't bend. And I could begin uh, slowly weaning away from that, and I should have what's hopefully my final checkup in six weeks. So it's been, you know, by the end of it, it'll be a six month thing, but that's what I was told, that's what I expected, but so far things have gone really well. Uh, Total Carnage asks, do you have all iPhone 5C colors? And if yes, which is your favorite? I do have all of the colors. I also have all of the, you know, the holy silicon cases that came with it. And for me, the blue is my favorite. Same with the iPhone XR. Uh, I really like the blue. Uh, there is a video of that. Uh, yes, uh, Modest or Hat. There's a video on the 512 Pixels YouTube channel that I'm really proud of that video. So go, uh, go check that video out if you haven't seen it. It's a couple years old now, but I really like it. Okay. Uh, had a question from Steve. Steve runs the excellent channel Mac84. If you like what I do, you'll like what Steve does. Uh, Steve asks, what one-hit wonder type product, either vintage or modern, do you wish Apple would have followed up with a revised version? I'm going to bend the question a little bit, but for a long time, Apple used to have relatively, they're still expensive, but relatively inexpensive towers. You get like a base model Power Mac G4 or Power Mac G5 or even the first body style Mac Pro relatively inexpensively compared to what the Mac Pro costs now. And there's rumors, of course, with Apple Silicon that maybe there will be a more entry-level desktop tower. But I think for people who want a tower but don't or can't spend the six grand to get in the door, 
there should be uh, an option that you could you could get in and then buy upgrades as you need them. And I think it's just a shame that Apple doesn't have anything like that right now. Because I think the Mac is great as a desktop. Alex asks, did you ever own the iPod Radio FM remote to add radio to your iPod? What did you think of it? So I never had that particular accessory for an iPod, but I did have an accessory from Griffin that plugged into the top of the iPod and you tuned it to a radio station and it would let, it basically let your iPod play to an FM station. So, you know, in your car you would find a frequency that wasn't used, you would match the iPod with it and then hit play on your iPod for music. And, you know, a bunch of people have used those over the years for iPhones and all sorts of other things. And uh, so I did use one of those for a little while and then in that particular car I had in high school ended up swapping head units so I could have aux in because that's the way to go. But uh, yeah, the, the weird world of iPod and even iPhone accessories feels like it's settling down as more cars get CarPlay and things like that. Um, all right, Steve asked a really interesting question. The partnership between you and Mike is so refreshing and feels so organic on the shows you do together. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you find it difficult to maintain solo projects with the same motivation as you did pre-relay based on the value of the duo approach and its success? So I think what Steve is asking here is, do you, do I struggle to have like my own, my own projects knowing that when Mike and I are together, you know, with relay, it's been, it's been really successful. Um, you know, Mike and I were friends for a long time before we went into business together. A lot of people would say that can't work. I would say that it definitely works. Um, I don't really find doing solo stuff difficult. I don't think he does either. Uh, first of all, we are involved in each other's solo projects. You know, we've both been doing more Twitch streaming and other things, and we bounce ideas off each other and talk about almost everything. But I think it's important to have our own stuff. It's just like, I think, a relationship. You want your significant other to have hobbies and interests that they can do without you. I think that's really important. I know it's been important in, in my marriage. So I think that's healthy to have solo projects. For me, the thing that will put solo stuff on the side is that Relay is what pays the bills and Relay is my job. And I can't take time away from that to do other things that that don't add to the bottom line um, if it's going to interfere with Relay. So I, I can do this, I can do 512 pixels, I can do all this stuff because I've built it into my schedule. But say that I wanted to go and do something, you know, write an app or something solo that took a lot of time, that really wouldn't be feasible right now because Relay is more than a full-time job. And so it's uh, there's a, there's a balance there but I think that it's important to have our own things. And I think that we, we both are better for it. All right, Sirhat asks, as an Apple collector, what is your stance on right to repair in terms of old and new Apple devices longevity? This is a fantastic question because right to repair is really complicated. So if you haven't looked into this world, right to repair is, uh, well, there's actually legislation, I think, and some other things, but it's the, the philosophy that someone who buys a product should be able to repair or replace components in that product themselves. And when you bought a computer in the 80s, 90s, or even 2000s, especially um, a desktop, but even a notebook, you could do those repairs yourself. You could take the bottom of your laptop off, replace RAM, add a different drive. But over time, as devices have become more vertically integrated and, and more consolidated, that has been harder and harder to come by. And so something like the MacBook Air, when it first came out, it still had a standalone hard drive you could replace if you get your hands on the weird form factor. But the MacBook Air today, you can't. The SSD, the memory, everything is soldered onto the board. And, and Macs now basically, unless you have a Mac Pro, or maybe, or maybe an iMac, if you have a notebook or a Mac Mini, definitely everything is basically just one board. And that means that if you have a component failure, it's not feasible for you to repair it yourself. The big thing that changed all of this is this. And 
when things like Touch ID, where if you had your Touch ID phone repaired, the Touch ID sensor and the logic board could be paired. And Apple has security reasons for that, but it means that if you get a repair, you'll have a subpar experience uh, after that. And that's a balance that Apple weighs and it decides more on what, ha what it values as far as security and thinness and lightness. You could still buy a notebook today with a two and a half inch drive or a, you know, um, you know, like even like my PC having an SSD that, you know, is like this big, but it's still separate from the board. Uh, but Apple hasn't chosen to go on that route. Now, where you really get into issues, like it's being pointed out in the, in the, in the stream chat, is when a manufacturer says, well, it's actually illegal for you to open this, or we're going to void your warranty if you do this, something like that. And so that is definitely too far, and there are companies that view things that way. Uh, overall, from like a collector standpoint, it's definitely problematic where, you know, if one of my Power Macs down there in the bottom row, if the drive dies or something, I can put it back together, right? I can get other components, buy another machine, rebuild one. And if a, you know, Retina MacBook Pro I have has a component failure, that's way harder to do because there's fewer components and the components that are there are much more complex. And so that's a very tricky subject and it's definitely going to make keeping these machines alive for a long time a lot harder than it was previously. It's a really good question and something really to think about. All right, um, Zach asks, you seem to change your haircut and facial hairstyle pretty frequently. What considerations do you make when changing things up? Does being on camera for YouTube or Twitch or on a stage for a live show change that? Uh, Generally, I will get a haircut and a beer trim before a live show. Uh, I just get bored, I think, is the honest question. I'll grow my beard out for a while. I'll get rid of it. Right now, I've got a you know, lack of haircut due to pandemic, but I'm across the threshold now. Where I'm just going to grow it out until I can put it in a ponytail, I think, is the goal. So, Which I haven't had my hair this long since high school. Uh, and so I'm definitely in, uh, <laughs> in a wild Steven territory. Uh, but yeah, it just changes over time. I think out of boredom and out of laziness sometimes, like I just don't want to buzz my head or don't want to trim my beard or something. And I like to just, I like to keep it moving. John, John asks, when can we share a creepy Airbnb again? So this is John Voorhees. Two summers ago, I'm looking at pictures. I'm gonna show you all a picture of this. Two summers ago, we went to Mac Stock and we got an Airbnb, and it was by far the worst Airbnb I've ever been in, uh, where it um, very clearly wasn't used very often, and it was like attached to a house. So if you can see this, there was the kitchen. It was like partially remodeled, but and it was it was two floors, and the the upstairs was like a, a hangout room and then a, at that far end, a bedroom and a bathroom, but like really weirdly cut out so the living room beneath it could have vaulted ceilings. And it was just sketchy because like very clearly it wasn't used very often. Like these were the stairs off the kitchen to the room I stayed in. It's like drywall repair and stuff. Sketchy, super empty, very clearly no one was in it very often, and it was just uh, kind of gross. And again, being attached to a house, like kind of like an in-law wing or something was weird because people were in the other side of the house sometimes, but where we were was, it looked older than the house looked, but then it was like weirdly unfinished in the middle of the repairs. It was very strange. Max stock is in the middle of nowhere and it was as close as we could get and I will not ever stay there again. There's some Airbnbs that I go back to, like in Chicago I've got two that I really like, in San Jose I've got two I really like, but if I make it back to Max stock in the future I will not stay there again. There is no way. 
Um, and it really wasn't that it was bad, it was just weird. Um, you know, all in all, my Airbnb experience has been pretty good, honestly. And I like traveling in them because I like to have a kitchen uh, for some dietary restrictions. And I like that I can have a place that we can record. And, I'd, you know, I just don't like hotels uh, unless I really got to do it. So, all right. So, Matt asks, what is your next big DIY project? Home repair, computer mod, studio upgrade, etc. So this is what I want to talk about today. I'm not ready to show anything, but currently, I'm going to draw you a picture here. So currently, let me zoom this in. So currently, my studio is a rectangle. Let's pretend that's a rectangle. So this is the door to the outside. This is where we are. That's the Twitch desk. This is the collection. There's a partial wall here, and this is my desk here. So this is my current office. I can tell you the um, I can tell you the exact dimensions if you give me one second. I'm just looking at an Apple Notes real quick. Uh, the the current this is 16 feet. And this is 12 feet. So it's 16 feet by 12 feet. Obviously inside dimensions are a little bit smaller because I've got walls and insulation and foam and stuff. So the plan is to double it. So the plan is to come out here, go another 12 feet, go 16 feet across, 12 feet back, so it would be 16 feet by 24 feet. So push into the backyard. Uh, this door will remain, and I'm gonna leave these walls up. The plan is basically have two rooms. Uh, the house is like over here, uh, and the garage is here. So the plan is to have the exterior door face the house, so have a walkway to the, to the back patio. And then to keep this side intact, but to, again, build another 16 by 12 and tie it into the same roof line and everything. I'm not sure where everything's going to go on this side. I know I want this desk to move probably right across from where I am to have this desk here. The plan, uh, there'll be a mini split AC and heating unit on this back wall. Uh, but the plan is to shoot video. Oh, I got a kid crying. Give me one second. So the plan is to shoot video against this back wall. And the plan, my overall plan is to have this new addition set up for video work. Where, oh, I can turn the mic back down, sorry. Um, to turn the, to be able to have um, stuff more kind of permanently set up in the, uh, in this new addition. I turned the mic down, y'all should be good now. So. That's the plan. This is the next big project. I am currently in discussions with a contractor um, who happens to be my mom. She owns a contracting company and we've gone back and forth. Uh, the big thing for me is not to disrupt the current space. So electrical will come in in parallel to where it comes into this side. I don't want to disrupt this area at all. And I want to have the ability to more like just like with this desk like basically just sit down and do something I kind of want that for fuller video projects as well so um, you know I'm sure there'll be another shelf like the one behind me for collection stuff uh, I want to put like a love seat or something at some some place to have a, an area to sit that is not a desk because I don't have that right now so that's the next big project and we will see when we get started like I said it's the the, the the engineering's not quite finalized, but um, we're working on it. Uh, one thing I've got to do is that the property line isn't straight. The property line is kind of comes in this way. And so I may have a problem where we actually need to notch it and make this addition shorter to, to clear the property line. We're, we're working through that with the county and the city and all that stuff we got to deal with. 
uh, to make sure I don't build this and then the city comes out and says you gotta move it. Um, and the other thing is, is dealing with how to tie it into this because this is a, a concrete block building. The new one will not be, it'll be more traditional construction, but how to tie it in to this existing wall that's right here. So still some engineering stuff to do, but we are getting there. Uh, I could probably rent a space for a really long time before I ever paid for this, but I, I want to continue working at home and I've just outgrown this space. I mean, being only 16 by 12, it's not very big and it's actually way smaller inside because it's concrete block. So it's block, you know, coming in and then we built off the concrete block interior walls with studs and insulation. So I've lost quite a bit of space. In fact, the interior dimensions of the current side uh, is only 13 feet, 10 inches, and then nine, 11. So you can see how much has been, has been eaten up by necessary construction. And so this not being concrete block, uh, even though the, the exterior footprint's the same, the interior footprint will be a little bit bigger on this side. So that's the plan. My plan is to do a series of vlogs through construction and I will, um, I will be working on this uh, over the next several months, hopefully. So that's, uh, that's kind of the next big thing. Um, and doing it where I, can't, I don't disrupt this studio is a big deal. So, cause I gotta keep working. Really, ideally, other than pouring the concrete for this, I wanna be able to work the whole time. And not, I won't be able to record the whole time, right? Cause it's gonna be hammering and all sorts of stuff. But doing this in a way where we don't have to cut into the, the existing studio was a big deal. Um, Todd asked, do you have any desk recommendations? This is an Ikea table. My other desk is a door bolted to some Ikea legs. So I do not have any desk recommendations. Uh, maybe someone in the chat does. Um, asking about solar power. I've looked into that. Um, I may do it at some point in the future. I think if I did it, I'd do it on the house first. We're in an extremely, extremely wooded neighborhood. And so I don't get a lot of sun. Kate is questioning my iPod number. It could be wrong. I counted in a hurry. So, uh, will there be enough electrical to fire up the entire collection? No, <laughs> I can't do them all at once. Uh, but I do hope to have kind of more space for the collection because I have a lot of stuff in the attic that I would like to get down. And honestly, the this side of the studio took several several iterations to get it where I wanted it. And now having been through it, been out here four years or so, have it dialed in where I want it. And I expect the new side to kind of take a similar amount of time to get, to get dialed in. So not everything will probably land in its final place at first. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do that I learned that I made a mistake in this side, because this building was here, we built the studio inside the building, is I don't have enough power out here. Um, I've got outlets, except in this corner where this desk is. And so this, all this stuff is plugged in way over there. And so there's gonna be more outlets in the, the new side. And, um, you know, we'll build it, we'll do drywall, I'll do some acoustic treatment. Not as much as I have in here, probably, Especially since moving to the lav mic for everything, it's a little bit easier to control that. So may have some, some stuff to do there, but I don't expect it to be as bad as this side was. Cause I feel like I've learned a lot in being in this space for four years. And I really, I think by expanding it, it buys me enough space that I could work out here and not really ever, I don't think need something that it couldn't offer. Um, this side being for audio, that side being for video, I think will be a good balance. And if I can create a space where I'm not at a desk to work, I would like that too. So uh, some sort of chair or love seat or couch somewhere. Um, Cause I like to be able to read and even work on a laptop and not be at a desk. And right now I gotta go inside to do that. And I would like that here. So, so anyways, that's the, uh, that's the Q and A type deal. We'll be back next week with more normal stuff. We will unbox those things. 
Ow, I hit my hand on the desk. We'll unbox those things and there's more coming. So I think it's gonna be a fun adventure. I'll keep everybody posted on the expansion stuff. Like I said, I really plan on doing a series of videos, probably on YouTube, uh, about that project. I think that'd be fun to bring everyone on. And really I can only do it because people listen and have memberships and that sort of thing. So I'm really, I'm really lucky to be able to do this. I've been saving for this for a long time. Basically all the money I would spend on travel last year got set aside for this and it's been growing. And so I think that'll be good. Uh, anyways, I hope you all have a good rest of the week. I'm going to check on the kids, make sure everyone's calmed down and I will see y'all soon. Bye y'all.